Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi everyone, Brad Free with David Aragona. This is Daily Racing Forum's Derby Watch. It was a quiet week last week with no Derby preps, but opinions often change and so do the odds. David, we have the same 20 horses on Derby Watch this week as last week, but several had their odds tweaked slightly. Why don't you introduce those price changes to the viewership? Yeah, I wanted to do a recalibration of the odds on the top 20 as opposed to last week. Uh, just to kind of give, in, give some insight into how I make these odds every week, I have a set number of points that I want to use as we march towards the Kentucky Derby. And when I say points, I'm talking about the points that a morning line maker would use when they add up the percentages of all of the odds for the horses in a race. Obviously, this is a different task, making a futures line as opposed to a morning line, because there are horses that are not on this list that could potentially make it into the Kentucky Derby field. But I have this set number of points that would be increasing every week. And what I was finding is that the number of points that I had laid out ahead of time for these weeks in the middle of March just seemed to be too many. And I was setting prices that are a little too short on the favorites as far as uh, being comfortable with Sierra Leone being six to one, like I had him last week. And I was reviewing the recently completed Kentucky Derby future wager that was uh, administered by Churchill Downs and comparing some of the prices that the public made those horses in that future wager last week. So just wanted to recalibrate the odds based on my personal feelings, uh, the, the interest of the public in some of these horses, how it's changed over time and that future wage from last week. So I did increase the prices on Sierra Leone and Timberlake back up to eight to one and 10 to one respectively, which is where I had them two weeks ago. And the biggest change was reducing fierceness's odds from 15 to one down to 10 to one. And that was reflective of the support that he received in the future wager last week. And it just feels like opinion on him has come around a little bit as that holy bull is further in the rear view mirror. We've seen some of his impressive recent workouts. And I think there's a more positive sentiment around him coming into that Florida Derby. Yeah, I, I agree. You also flip-flop the odds on Forever Young and Deterministic. Forever Young went from 15 to 12, Deterministic from 12 to 15, a minor change. David, just looking at, at the, the our graphic and the odds line, to me, the order of the odds, the order of the horses is far more important, in my opinion, than the actual price that you have assigned, especially when, when it's this far out, I mean, we're still what six more than six weeks out from the Kentucky Derby. So to me, it's the it's the where these horses are actually positioned. And in the case of fierceness, he was the co fourth choice kind of buried in the 15 to one range with five others. But now th there he is. He's right there. He's the second ranked horse on Derby watch. When you're structuring a, a an odds line, whether it's a futures line or, you know, 48 hours in front of a, a race at one of the Naira tracks. Do you list the horses in order and then price them? That's how I do it. I'm just curious what your technique is. Yeah, I would say that I typically try to group the horses into tiers. I try to identify the favorites. I try to identify sort of the, the no hopers or the horses that are going to be huge prices. And then those in that middle tier. And often the most difficult task for the line maker is sort of sorting through those horses in that middle tier and deciding which ones are going to be six to one, which are going to be 12 to one. Um, obviously in this situation, it's a similar uh, problem because you've got a lot of horses in that mid tier, sort of our five uh, through 14th ranks horses on this list are between 15 to one and 25 to one. Uh, I could shuffle those and have them in a very different order based on the odds that we've set them at. So I do agree with you that uh, trying to make this list, the the order that we place them in is a little bit more important. And I've been trying to keep that order towards the top reflective of the public opinion, at least as I perceive it right now. Uh, but it does feel like it is fairly wide open just in the general sense from top to bottom. Well, fierceness now the co-second choice right up there near the top. Um, he's also he's co-second choice along with Timberlake. Fierceness runs in the Florida Derby next weekend, and he worked very, very well with an undefeated stablemate by the name of Tuscan Sky. Did that workout influence your dropping his odds, talking about fierceness? 
It did. I would imagine that's one of the reasons why he was bet down to, I believe it was nine to one in the future wager last week administered by Churchill Downs. It just feels like there's uh, a feeling that uh, fierceness is going to return to form in the Florida Derby. Obviously, he still has to prove it on the racetrack. And I will note that fierceness did appear to be working very well coming into the Holy Bull and still disappointed. Fierceness is a horse that has trained very well in the mornings, really, before he made his debut throughout his career. So we'll see if that translates to a better effort in the afternoon in the Florida Derby. I would say that it seems like the public is a little more confident in that than maybe I personally am, but I wanted to set the 10 to 1 based on what it seems like that public opinion is right now. I think fierceness is going to return to form in the Florida Derby. We'll talk more about that next week. Um, as far as the other significant change to the the odds, the prices, um, Forever Young, he was another horse that was kind of buried and you dropped him down to 12 to 1. He's now the co- or the solo fourth choice on the list. I was actually surprised initially that he closed at 12 to one in the Kentucky Derby future wager after reviewing the thoroughgraph figure that was assigned to his win in the Saudi Derby. And David, you brought this up a couple of weeks ago. That was a very fast race, a highly rated race. The only horse on Derby watch that has run faster this year than forever young is Mystic Dan. So, um, I guess my point is, I think maybe you were a little ahead of the curve, at least ahead of me with regards to Forever Young. What influenced you to drop him down to the make him the fourth choice on the list? I mean, even when I said him at 15 to 1, I was kind of contemplating going lower with him, and I received some confidence in that regard when I saw he closed he closed at a shorter price in that future wager last week. And it just feels generally like the public is more open to a new face this year. As you were alluding to, none of these horses that are higher up on the list have run particularly fast speed figures yet, except for fierceness in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile, which he still has to repeat as a three-year-old. So it does seem like a horse like Forever Young, who the general sentiment is that he's going to to appreciate some added ground. He's going to get it in the UAE Derby, and he's already run what appeared to be a fast race in the Saudi Derby. And, you know, one of the things I'm considering when I'm setting these prices is how likely are these horses to actually make it to the Kentucky Derby starting gate? A lot of these horses have still big questions to answer in their final round prep races, and it seems like Forever Young is not going to be getting the sternest test in the UAE Derby, so it does seem like there's a very strong chance he's going to be able to pick up those necessary 100 or 50 points uh, when he's competes in that race in about nine days time. So uh, Forever Young seems like a horse that will be able to make it to the Kentucky Derby starting gate. And I think if he does, he's going to attract a lot of support. Well, another horse whose odds went the other way, they drifted up, is deterministic. And he's only started twice. He's never raced around two turns. And last week we mentioned that there was the chance that Clement was thinking about training him into the Kentucky Derby, which to me would have been a, a tall, big hill to climb. As of Wednesday morning, this is reported by Dave Grenig in Daily Race and Form. Chris Clement, the trainer of Deterministic, is now leaning toward the wood. And I, I, I think that's a good move, David. I, I, I don't want to see a horse making his first start around two turns in the Kentucky Derby. At least we're going to find out more about Deterministic in the wood. And his, his odds could be um, revised again pending his performance on April 6th, right? Yeah, I dropped him down to be the third choice on this list after the Gotham. He was sort of the one horse during that period of time that stepped up with a performance uh, that we hadn't necessarily seen in his prior races. So uh, he felt like the horse that was the now horse at that time. Since then, with more time having passed, it seems like enthusiasm towards him has tempered a little bit. But obviously, he could be uh, you know exciting once again if he runs a big race in the Wood Memorial. And like you, I'm glad to see that they're going to try to get another prep race in with him. Well, Sierra Leone remains on on top of Derby Watch, where he has been since the middle of last month. He goes April 6th in the bluegrass. In the meantime, Sierra Leone's win in the Risen Star is going to be tested on Saturday at Fairgrounds because six horses that he defeated in the Risen Star that Sierra Leone defeated are running back in the Louisiana Derby. So we're going to see if that race was valid. And perhaps to a lesser extent, Timberlake's victory in the Rebel Stakes is going to be tested because the Rebel runner-up Common Defense is also in the Louisiana Derby. So we have a couple of races to discuss this week, This week, Louisiana Derby and the Jeff Ruby Stakes. And let's start off talking about the Louisiana Derby. David, why don't you set us up with this mile and three-sixteenths race uh, at Fairgrounds? 
Well, this field is likely to scratch down to 11. First of all, I, our car league, uh, Marcus Hirsch, did report that uh, Todd Pletcher is likely to run Agate Road here in Triple Espresso at the Jeff Ruby Stakes at Turfway. So uh, likely to not have that horse in the number one post position in the starting gate for this Louisiana Derby. But contention runs very deep in this field, as you said. Plenty of runbacks from that risen star. We've got common defense coming out of that uh, Rebel Stakes where he was second to Timberlake. And it feels like there's no clear stick standout among this field. I understand why Track Phantom is the morning line favorite. He's sort of been the reliable presence in this division, at least in terms of the fairgrounds road to the Kentucky Derby, just running well every time, but he's got to get an extra 16th of a mile. He got a very good trip in the Risen Star, so we'll see if he can get as favorable of a pace set up on the front end in this Louisiana Derby, though I will say, to Track Phantom's benefit, there doesn't appear to be that much speed in this field, so we might not see that different of a pace scenario than what transpired in the Risen Star. Yeah, I, I agree. And T Track Phantom does benefit by a, a pace scenario that's extremely um, light, I guess, to one way to put it. It seems like Track Phantom's speed figures have kind of plateaued. His last four numbers, 89, 90, 89, 88, he does not appear to be getting any better. Is that a fair criticism? I think it is. You can admire his consistency, but at some point you want to see a horse like this run a faster number because he's going to have to if he's going to be competitive in a race like the Kentucky Derby. Steve Asperson is known to be the type of trainer that can get these horses to continue racing every month and make those incremental improvements. And we'll see if he can do it on Saturday, but he is going to face a pretty deep field. He's got to best some of the horses that he already defeated last time who might have a little bit more upside than he does. I think it's easy to project some improvement for a horse like Honor Marie, who did not get the best trip or pace scenario in the Risen Star last time. We'll see if things work out better for him in this Louisiana Derby, but I would expect him to take a step forward. I know some people think that Catching Freedom has been training better into this race. Uh, you've got a horse like Common Defense, who uh, did get a great trip in the Rebel Stakes, but does feel like one who's on an upward trajectory. And even a horse like the number 11, Tuscan Gold, coming in for Chad Brown, a bit of a wild card in this field, but he was visually impressive breaking his maiden last time. And I know that Chad Brown feels that this horse wants every bit of added ground that he can get. Uh, you mentioned catching freedom. He's not as fast yet as track phantom, but in the case of catching freedom, at least his numbers appear to be going the right direction. He's another horse. I think it's fair to expect a, another forward move this weekend. What do you think about him? Yeah, he's sort of been green, struggling with his lead changes in a few of his races. We saw that habit again last time in the Risen Star. So you do want to see this horse get over that mental hurdle and finish off his race a little more professionally. But uh, it seems like he's been training better. He's a horse that sometimes can be very underwhelming in the mornings. And uh, distance is not supposed to be a problem for him. So I think he could take a step forward here. We'll see what kind of price he is going out for Brad Cox and Flavie and Pratt. Those types do tend to take money, uh, but uh, I could definitely see him moving forward in this uh, Louisiana Derby. There are four horses listed on Derby Watch who are entered in the Louisiana Derby. Another one is Common Defense, and I'm very interested to see how he runs, whether or not he can validate the performance of Mystic Dan. Mystic Dan won the Southwest with a 101 buyer. Common Defense earned a 90 buyer speed figure with that great rail trip under Brian Hernandez. And I, I, I want to see Common Defense run well and validate Mystic Dan because I'm kind of a, a fan of Mystic Dan, but I need to see a little bit more proof. What about Common Defense? Yeah, I think the first inclination is to downgrade him a little bit after getting such a perfect trip in the Rebel, but he might just be a horse that's improving at the right time because that Rebel Stakes came up relatively fast compared to some other preps that we've seen, and that 90 buyer that he earned last time makes him very competitive against this field. When I watch him run, he gives me the impression that at a distance is going to be just fine for him, and Brian Hernandez Jr., it's not like he's just given one great ride on this Kentucky Derby Trail so far. We've seen him give a couple, so uh, we'll see if he's able to work some magic for common defense on Saturday. Well, the Louisiana Derby a mile and three, six, three sixteenths, a race without much early speed, track phantom and antiquarian, maybe to a lesser degree, Hall of Fame as well. Um, that race is race number 12 on Saturday, a mile and three sixteenths. The other Derby prep this weekend is the Jeff Ruby Stakes, and that's at Turfway Park. Um, David, why don't you set us up with the Jeff Ruby, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the recent history of this race. Well, like I was alluding to with the uh, Louisiana Derby in terms of those Todd Pletcher horses, Agate Road is very likely to come out of this race and compete in the Louisiana Derby instead. So that 
brings uh, Triple Espresso, his stable mate, one uh, horse closer to getting into the starting gate. This field will be limited to 12, and the 13 and 14 are currently also eligible entrants. Uh, it's a wide open race. The Jeff Ruby uh, is a tough race to handicap every year because you've got a ton of horses that are switching surfaces. Some that have previously run on synthetic have some class questions to answer, and I think that's very much the case this year because the horse that's shown as the morning line favorite, the number 10, Endlessly, he's run well in just about every start of his career outside of the Breeders' Cup, and even that performance uh, wasn't exactly disgraceful. He's just proven himself to be more of a turf horse did handle the synthetic last time at Golden Gate, but I know a conversation that's been happening around this meet at Turfway Park is that one synthetic horse doesn't necessarily translate to another one, and Golden Gate and Gulfstream shippers don't necessarily always do quite as well over Turfway synthetic horse, so we'll see if that form ultimately does transfer, but a lot of class questions for many of these horses to answer. Well, the Jeff Ruby Stakes and also the Louisiana Derby, 100 Derby qualifying points to the winner, 50 to the runner-up. So if you run 1-2 in one of those preps, you're probably going to make the Kentucky Derby field. Regarding the recent history of the Jeff Ruby, Turfway Park went to synthetic in 2006. And since then, there have been 15 runners from the Jeff Ruby who made their next start in the Kentucky Derby, 15. In 2022, third-place finisher Rich Strike exited the Jeff Ruby to win the Derby. In 2011, it was Animal Kingdom winning them both. Last year, two fills won the Jeff Ruby, finished a gallant second in the Derby. And back in 2007, Hard Spun won the Jeff Ruby. It's been known as the Lane's End and the Spiral as well. And he finished second in the Kentucky Derby. I guess the point is, even though Turfway Park is a synthetic surface, that's a pretty decent record. 15 starters from the Jeff Ruby with two Kentucky Derby wins and two Kentucky Derby seconds. And I guess we're going to find out a little bit more about this field. The one, the one horse that I'm interested in, well, there's a lot of horses I'm interested in this race, but um, that has entered into the Jeff Ruby, and that is Lucky Jeremy. Lucky Jeremy finished third in the Sunland Derby. And I know that the Sunland Derby winner stronghold does not get a lot of attention. We haven't talked about him a whole lot. He might be the only California-based three-year-old who is expected to, could still have a chance to make the Kentucky Derby field. Um, Lucky Jeremy finished third behind stronghold. I'd like to see Lucky Jeremy run well and at least validate the Sunland Derby to some extent. Does he have a chance in this race, Lucky Jeremy? I think he's one of many horses that has a chance in this race. I mean, he's only lost twice, and those races were won by Stronghold and Honor Marie. If you go back to his career debut, both horses who are on our Derby watch list. So uh, he's run well a number of times. He is one of those horses that will be trying to the transition from dirt to synthetic, which sometimes can be a little trickier than going from turf to synthetic. But we saw that done last year when two fills won this race in very fast time. So Lucky Jeremy, definitely one to consider. And he's got a local rider on board in Gerardo Corrales. So that might be a feather in his cap. Uh, regarding Stronghold, who um, defeated Lucky Jeremy, Stronghold is reported this morning by Steve Anderson in California that Stronghold is going to stay in California and his next start is expected to be in the Santa Anita Derby on April 6th. So he's staying home, Stronghold is, and he'll be facing better company, I think, at Santa Anita than he met down in New Mexico. Of course, we'll see what happens with Lucky Jeremy this week. A couple other horses that are in the Jeff Ruby, Northern Flame and Woodcourt finished third and fourth behind Timberlake in the Rebel. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't see any potential Kentucky Derby you know, contenders in this Jeff Ruby field, I can change my mind after this race, but I think what this race might be able to do is shed a little bit more light on the likes of Stronghold and perhaps Timberlake as well. All right, a couple of quick takeaways or maybe look aheads. Um, I would love to see a strong pace in the Louisiana Derby. We've had a whole spring, winter, spring full of slow pace races. But other than antiquarian track phantom and maybe Hall of Fame to a lesser degree, I'm not sure that this race is going to be run at a rapid early tempo, um, which is one reason why I think there might be a long shot worth betting. Antiquarian, who's listed at 12 to 1, he has a similar race pattern to Todd Pletcher trained Kings Barnes last year. In other words, they both are making their third career start in, in the Louisiana Derby. And in a race without much pace, Antiquarian at 12 to 1 might be worth a gamble. As far as the Jeff Ruby goes, um, I, look, I, I, Endlessly is a nice horse. Um, 
I would not mind trying to beat him at odds of five to two. The problem is looking up and down this field, I can't find anybody to do that. David, how about some takeaways and or look aheads for this week? Yeah, I'm just mostly looking for these races to produce some faster speed figures because I think we're still waiting for horses to really establish themselves as being able to take that next step and be legitimate Kentucky Derby contenders. Uh, we only have a very short list of those so far, so we want to see some horses really do take steps forwards in these uh, more competitive races that we're getting, these 100-point derby preps. As far as the Louisiana Derby, like you said, I'll be interested to see how this pace actually does play out. I wouldn't be surprised to see some changing of tactics maybe from the recent star of horse like Hall of Fame. I could see him getting a much more aggressive ride than he received in the Risen Star, given how keen he got in the early stages of that race. I still have to make picks for both of these races. I'll be doing videos on each of these uh, that you can find on the DRX YouTube channel. I think making picks in the Jeff Ruby is going to be a little bit more daunting because that is a tough race to handicap, but it might be the kind of race where you can find a decent price if you're a little bit against a horse like Endlessly. Okay, very good. Well, let's finish up with the on the bubble segment. And I kind of feel like we're cheating a little bit here because three of these horses are eight to one shots in the Louisiana Derby. If they finish first or second, they're in the Derby field. Agate Road, Hall of Fame, Tuscan Gold, they're all eight to one. They're on the bubble. They have to run well this weekend. Otherwise, it's going to be tough to make the Kentucky Derby field. And Uncle Heavy, who's been off and on the list, he finally had a workout, and it looks like the Wood Memorial is going to be his next start. David, Uncle Heavy is on the bubble right now. I think that that might change possibly next week, right? Yeah, we'll see if some horses drop off the list next week after competing against each other in this Louisiana Derby. That seems like it might be inevitable, but we'll see if maybe there are some new faces that are deserving of entering the list. And if there is a spot for Uncle Heavy, he is sort of on the bubble at the moment. I think that's a great way to describe his status uh, because he's kind of a long shot at this point. The Withers, I think we're still waiting for some confirmation as to how strong a race that really was. But it is nice to see him at least back in training for that one memorial. And we'll see how tough that final prep comes up. Absolutely. Well, that's a wrap for Derby Watch. Next week, David and I will recap the Louisiana Derby and the Jeff Ruby Stakes. We'll also preview the Florida, Arkansas, and UAE Derbies. And next week, we're going to have two segments because there's lots to talk about as we get closer and closer toward the Kentucky Derby. So for David Aragona, I'm Brad Free. We'll see you next time.